The typical application is the edge learning right now. That's where we're a little bit different than everywhere else. We have a very easy way to edge learn any type of data that you want to do to personalize the device or give some customization where that last layer we shift the, what we call the weights so that it's very easy to edge learn any new faces components depending on the data set that it's already trained on hello ipxers so here we are here at ces we're joined by todd from brainchip who's going to give you an introduction to welcome to essential ai because i'm not quite sure what that means Ubiquitous distributed AI close to the sensor, inspired by the human brain. Sounds good, but I don't know what it means, so Todd's going to explain. Sure, thank you. Um, most traditional AIs are just doing what we call matrix multiplication. So whether it's a CPU or a GPU, they're just doing math really fast. Yep. Here at BrainChip, what we're trying to do is actually mimic how the human brain works. Right now, as you're taking in data from your eyes, ears, nose, taste, whatever, yep. you're primarily focused on one thing. And I'm pretty sure it's your audio because you're listening to my voice. So that's what Essential AI is all about. It's understanding the key things that are important and parsing out what we call sparsity, the things that aren't important. So when we do computation in AI, we're actually only parsing the things that are important so my compute is less, my memory is less, my efficiency is much higher. Okay, so your chip, yes, yes, your chip is taking in data from somewhere. What will be a typical ap application for that? So right now, this is what we call our time of flight sensor. Okay. Okay, time of flight is, you know, we can take data from anywhere. It can be your classic uh, RGB camera that takes in red, amber, green. This is actually on semi's time of flight sensor yep. that is actually taken in distance as well as depth. So what we're going to do here um, for this particular use case is actually going to measure the distance of different points on my body. So it's looking at my shoulders and my nose to determine distance. And it's also going to determine depth. So if I'm like in a cabin, in a car cabin, yep. and I want to give access to some of the parameters in the car, it's going to be able to tell the difference between an actual person and maybe an image that I'm trying to spoof on that person. Because there's no depth to an image, but there is depth to a human face. And you'll be able to see that as we step in here a little bit later to show you how it actually works. Right. So, so just a quick question. That is also a pretty typical industrial ap application as well as an automotive application. So, so anywhere where you've got time of flight, what you're saying is your, your technology will take the data in that this is sucking in and then you predetermine which bits you're interested in. Sorta. We're doing the computation on those, those bits that we're So it's predetermined. In. Yeah. Pre predetermined. Pre-made model that will actually determine you know whether there's actual person or it's just an image right. and it may be in an industrial you know let's just say a, a maintenance guy who's fixing some big industrial oil rig right yeah you know he goes in and messes at the terminal I can have a time of flight sensor make sure I'm not doing spoofing on it I can check the coordinates I can check the face I can build a model that trained just on that one person so he's the only guy able to use it right so and it, do, so, so are they buying from you an actual chip or are they buying from you the software? We are actual hardware. So it is hardware. It is hardware and we actually license to the chip companies. Right. Similar to ARM technology for those of you who know ARM CPUs, we license our technology that uh, a customer can embed within the chips. But because this is neuromorphic in, in approach, which is different than your classical CPUs or GPUs, we have to build a reference design so we have chips that actually work in the environment, which is part of what our demos are showing right now right. and working on. So hardware. just explain that word neuromorphic to me. So, so you've explained it as an IP model. So does it actually sit on your hardware or does it sit on somebody else's hardware? It is our hardware as a accelerator to a what we call a host processor. So right. you still may have it. This one happens to be an Intel processor, right. but the AI inference is working on the Akita chip. I understand. So it's sitting next to it, and that's where and that's where that's happening. So just explain that word neuromorphic, what that means to you. So neuromorphic means brain-like, and that's where I'm disregarding the things that aren't important, and I'm only doing computation 
on the things that are. So it gets really efficient for edge-based computation right. to allow low power edge, what we call inferencing. Yeah. So I hate to ask you a difficult or nasty question, but if you're going to do, uh, to me, all, all brain-like interpretation is taking in data and deciding what you're going to do with it based on an algorithm. Correct. Yes. So what's the difference between that and what you would describe as neuromorphic? So neuromorphic <laughs> does it much more efficient. Because I don't understand the difference. Just explain, try, try and t tell me so the subtleties between... It, if I give you a simple, this is a real simple example. Yep. Let's say I have a set of numbers and it's a five by five matrix. Yep. So I have five rows, five columns. Yep. And any AI engine is going to multiply that by what they call a kernel, a filter, or something like that, which is maybe a three by three. You have to multiply all five by five of those numbers by the three by three that comes up to about 20, 225 computations. Okay? Yeah. So with a neuromorphic approach, we basically look at those five by five numbers. Yeah. Okay? And anything that's a zero value, we don't do computation on. So when we multiply that five by five by the three by three kernel, we may get, let's say it has three things that are actually happening in there. We only do three multiplied by the five that gives you about 80%, 90% less computations in that particular example. So I'm doing things smarter and faster than traditional GPUs, CPUs, or DSPs. Right, okay, all right. So what's going on here with this um demo that you've got going on here? There, there's two things happening here. The first one is we have this green bounding box around Nolan's face and it is an unknown person. So it's just recognizing a face. And what he's going to do is classify his name so now it'll recognize him on the hardware device. So the first thing he does is he uh, specifies which face he's looking at, puts his name in the uh, box and then he says learn on his face. Okay. So now you can see it recognizes Nolan. Now it's also looking at the coordinates of his nose and his shoulders. They're X and Y coordinates as well as the Z coordinates which are the depth of uh, this sensor. And this sensor is looking from about a one to three meter inference like an in cabin or maybe an industrial yeah. IoT. Yeah. So what we're going to do next is take your image here. Okay. So why don't you switch places. Yeah. And let's turn this around so I can put Guy put guy in there. So you gotta look at the camera right here. Yeah. And doesn't have the depth in it just yet, so you get that. So now it recognizes Guy. Right. So Guy as well as Nolan. It is recognized. So now if you step back out, yep. Nolan comes in here. And now it there recognizes we Nolan, and I think both of you can get in there if you get both faces in there. Should be able to. Looks like a 1980s rock band, doesn't it, with a retro blue? So, um, so what your chip, your your chip is taking in the sensor information from the on semi, and it's understanding the subtleties of the differences, and and what you're saying is that it's the it's the it's the subtleties that you're doing quicker, rather than. Um, Save it, or, or doing something quicker rather than or more less, efficient. I like more saying efficient, more efficient. More efficient. It's more okay. efficient computation to not only figure out who the face is and label that face on the fly as Guy right. or Nolan, but also to determine the points of interest that I have a neural network algorithm that's determining right. where I am. Right. So now, like in an in cabin, if I have if I have a uh, airbag deployment, right, I can actually get some measurements of where the face is where the shoulders are and do quick computations to deploy it for someone who's tall versus someone who's short and maybe I'm actually going to measure the distance between the airbag being deployed and how fast maybe a, uh, a passenger is moving so I can deploy it at a different rate for safety critical devices. Right, right. So just last question for this on this demo. I'm, I'm, I'm a design engineer in let's say automotive or industrial uh, we understand that the camera is taking in the information. We understand that we have to have to understand uh, the efficiency mm -hmm. of the data, which was your word. Um, what is a, what's the, how does somebody come to you and have a discussion with you and say, right, 
I think the brain chip can help me do more efficient computation. So right now, AI is a big buzzword. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's and CES. so you have to really know and understand the different use cases we are. And a lot of these use cases that are being done, there's a lot of software and aspects that are being done. And we actually help with the model to make this more efficient, faster time to market and deployment on the edge for AI devices. Right. So they can't buy this off the shelf. They have to come and talk to you about the subtleties and then you build it for them. Sure. And they can send an email to sales at brainchip.com. Or indeed go to ipexchange.tech. And get information to, uh, you know, to our team. And we also have development boards. And development boards come in PCI Express, M.2. We actually have these development systems, um, such as the PC Shuttle. Uh, we just launched our VVDN box that uses an NXP processor and our Unigen box. So right. there's many types of deployments. So, so on, that, on that board, or that, 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 that development board, it'll have the chip that's, doing, that's taking in all the data, and it's got your chip then next to it. So what do they do? When, what happens when they plug that in? So they'll plug it in. Usually if you buy a development system, there's a uh, preloaded demos that they could start with just to see how it works. Right. And they can start customizing it for their applications. Uh, we have a support module that has a uh, support page that actually goes to there, does unboxing, shows them how to deploy the uh, drivers and use cases. So there's a lot of easy ways that we've done to get a customer up and running okay, fast so and quick. When you ship that, What's been the sort of typical sweet spot for this kind of application where you're looking for that level of, of, of subtlety of data? What's the typical application that someone would be using that for? Yeah, so the typical application is the edge learning right now. That's where we're a little bit different than everywhere else. We have a very easy way to edge learn any type of uh, um, data that you want to do to personalize the device or give some customization where that last layer we shift the, what we call the weights so that it's very easy to edge learn any new faces components depending on the data set that it's already trained on right so this is, you would say that this is a I mean obviously we, 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 we compared two two faces this is specifically for if we started this again which we can't but if we did we'd say perfect for face re recognition and that's where you would that's one aspect of it but we could also do let's say someone's building a uh, industrial fruit line detection to do the same th to do the same thing with right. apples oranges and bananas but i want to do watermelons and strawberries i can learn watermelon and strawberries and push that to another floor for detection as well excellent thank you for that introduction thank you. so that was brain chip at ces we've actually done two more videos with them uh, about some of their other use cases and maybe even different chips. If you want to learn more and apply to evaluate the technology, head to ipexchange.tech. And yeah, look forward to more videos on BrainChip and AI at CES.